You're watching News 3 This Morning with Kevin Huntsberger, Jay LaGray, and meteorologist Ashley Smith. In this half hour, residents of a small Jackson County town gather to discuss the future of their levee system. We'll have an update in a few minutes. In the wake of recent security breaches at several big name retailers, we offer some tips on protecting your identity from possible thieves. And the FDA has a warning for consumers. It's about concussions and supplements that claim to prevent or cure them. Details coming up a little later into your health. Good Tuesday morning, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. We'll also get you caught up on headlines from around the world in a few minutes. But first, Ashley has the latest on our forecast right here at home. No headlines from Mars or weather from Mars. I just need to make sure I've got your name spelled right for this application. <laughs> It's S-M-I-T-H, okay, uh, right? I'm not telling you anything. Yeah. I'm not sure it doesn't work that way. I don't even think I'm going to talk to you the rest of the day. <laughs> it might be better for both of us. <laughs> uh, yeah, the weather around here is actually not all that bad. It's much colder this morning than it was at this time yesterday. 20s and 30s right now. 23 in Mount Vernon, 30 in Marion and in Carbondale, 28 in Harrisburg and in Paducah. We are going to remain dry for the most part, but a small chance for a passing shower later this afternoon. Not expecting that to cause much of an impact and many of us will stay dry at the bus stop this morning temperatures in the 30s but we will see mostly sunny skies early and then the clouds will build in later this afternoon with a high of 48 those isolated showers mainly after the noon hour and ending around three or four o'clock for everyone we'll talk more about a cool down headed our way for at least a day coming up in just a bit sounds good thank you ashley Residents in Grand Tower are working to protect their homes from devastating flooding. The levee that protects the small Jackson County town from the Big Muddy River is in bad shape and has a big hole in one of the sections. But the town can no longer rely on federal funding to pay for a fix, so city leaders met to discuss their options. News 3 Sam Jones was there and has our story this morning. It was standing room only in Grand Tower Monday night. A passionate group concerned about how to fix the town's levee system. Only thing is we're protecting our homes. We're all together on this. Mayor Mike Ellett says time is of the essence. It was down, they're, they're, but we got to we got to prepare. We've just got to get those little things in line and get the help we can get. We're going to have to do it ourselves. They considered everything from partial repairs like getting a permit from the Army Corps of Engineers to replace a pipe that's in immediate danger. We know that we've got a weak levee. So this is not a secret. To the full $1.6 million needed to bring the entire levy up to par. We'll fix it. Somehow, some way, we'll fix it. Jackson County commissioners suggested an intergovernmental appropriation, moving money from the county to the town to help pay for some of the repairs. If we get water like we had in 93 and the levy breaks over there, that railroad dump ain't going to last. Residents say it's not a matter of if, but when the river will flood Grand Tower. Many like Sandy Hudson aren't sure where to turn. There are no options. Bottom line, it's us and we either have to sink or swim. We will swim. She's called the area home for 27 years. While they face a daunting challenge, Hudson does remain hopeful. I'm going nowhere. No matter what, I'm not going anywhere. Saying the community is small, but mighty. We don't have millions of people in our community, but we matter. That's bottom line. Every single person matters. In Jackson County, Sam Jones, News 3. Now, residents worry they only have a matter of weeks to do something. They say once the water level rises in the spring, it'll be too late. Leaders expect to decide their next steps later this week. Johnson County leaders have pushed back a decision on a proposed fracking committee. The Johnson County Board discussed the possible committee yesterday, but heard from a lot of critics about uh, fracking. So they suggest a committee on fracking, uh, the critics rather, suggest that a committee on fracking would amount to an endorsement of the drilling practice. So leaders say the committee is needed just in case fracking does come to Johnson County. After a heated debate, though, the county board tabled the issue until after the March primary. That's when voters will weigh in on fracking in a ballot referendum. And in the world this morning, voting in Egypt has been put on standby as a bomb has damaged the facade of one of the courthouses and nearby buildings in Cairo. Security officials have said that no one was hurt in the blast and it's still unclear just who is responsible. Egyptians are once again voting 
on a new constitution draft, the second time since 2012. Residents of Baghdad are assessing the damage caused by a wave of explosions that killed at least 26 people. Police say the deadliest of the explosions took place last night when a car bomb went off near a market. Several other explosions rocked the city yesterday. The series of attacks occurred while UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon was in Baghdad to urge leaders to tackle issues with violence. At least 14 people are dead and another seven hurt after an explosion at an illegal gambling hall in southern China. It happened yesterday afternoon. Doctors say most of the people they're treating have facial injuries caused by rocks or other flying fragments. The official's cause of the blast remains under investigation, but police believe it was pre-planned. Several federal parklands will be allowing free camping during five designated weekends this year. That includes the Shawnee National Forest here in southern Illinois. The U.S. Forest Service says fees for non-reserved campsites will be waived for the evenings of the two days before Martin Luther King Jr. Day, which falls on January 20th or next Monday. Shawnee campgrounds include in the, included in the fee waiver include Garden of the Gods, Pounds Hollow, Camp Cadiz, Pine Hills and Johnson Creek. The other fee-free weekends are scheduled for next month's President's Day weekend, then in June, September, and November. The Forest Service says the goal is to encourage more people to visit federal parks. And 605, speaking of camping, we'll head to the great outdoors for our viewer photo of the day. Plus, Ashley has the forecast coming up in two minutes. But first, here's a live look at Mount Rushmore this morning in South Dakota. You're watching News 3 this morning. So, eight. welcome back. It's time now for our viewer photo of the day. And after last week's nasty weather, it's so nice to see the sun. It really is. And uh, you get all kinds of photos, emails, uh, Facebook messages, and people can reach out to you in a number of ways. Yeah, absolutely. And this photo was shared on our Facebook page. This is sent to us by Caitlin Russell. A really cool sunset shot out at Wolf Creek and just one of the many waterways that we have around here that provide kind of that just beautiful landscape to take those photos. And so if you are out and about and you think that this would make a great viewer photo of the day, go ahead and share them with us here. You can either share them on our Facebook page at News 3 This Morning or email me a smith at WSILTV.com and we'll continue to share them as well. Uh, with all of our viewers. Today uh, might be a good day for a sunrise across the region, but I think sunset might be a little bit more tricky. We're going to see a sunshine early in the day and then the clouds will start to build in. Temperatures right now in the 20s and 30s, 25 in Mount Vernon, 30 in Marion, 31 in Paducah and Poplar Bluff. The only area above freezing at 33 degrees. Of course, we don't have any precipitation to worry about right now, but a small chance for an isolated shower later this afternoon. 27 degrees in Chicago, a little bit cooler to the north. Otherwise, 30s and 40s seem to be the common theme across the Midwest. 36 in St. Louis, 43 in Kansas City. We're going to see clouds build in from the west later today. So as I mentioned, lots of sunshine early on in the morning hours, and then those clouds start to cover the region. And with those clouds does come the chance for a small chance for an isolated shower. This is all along a cold front. We've been talking about how we see lots of different fronts moving through uh, throughout this week. Almost every day or at least every other day we see a front pass through. But they really just don't have a lot of moisture with them. They're just not very strong fronts. So this one is going to be the same story. Not a lot of moisture with it, but temperatures will fall overnight and into tomorrow. It looks like a rather cold day, especially compared to what we've been dealing with. Winds out of the south throughout the day today, eventually switching to the northwest once that front moves through. Notice the precipitation with that front is heavier further to the north, even some mixed uh, precipitation in the form of sleet or ice, and then further to the north, some snow. For us, it is just going to be that chance for a little bit of light rain. Notice how Skycast, I put a pause in here later this afternoon, right at 2 o'clock, it shows a small area of rain. I think anyone in that area could see a, an isolated shower, but that doesn't mean everyone will. It's just going to be very light rain possible. It comes to an end later this afternoon. Overnight, we will uh, keep those clouds with us, but behind that cold front, temperatures really start to fall off and winds start to die down as well. Today, later this afternoon, winds could be pretty uh, breezy at times. 
gusting over 20 and 30 miles an hour. As we head into uh, Wednesday morning, even a small chance for a few flurries, kind of any moisture that we see uh, from this front left behind, will it will try and squeeze that out in the form of some uh, flurries Wednesday morning. That's about it, though. It's not going to accumulate at all. As we head into Thursday, here comes another front. That one's going to cool us down for Friday. But again, it looks like we're not going to see any moisture from this front further to the north, you will. So if you're planning a long weekend on Thursday, Keep in mind that we are going to see a little bit of that snow further to the north of us here at home. Not expecting really any precipitation from this system, just a cool down as we head into Friday. Temperatures this afternoon in the mid to upper 40s. Tomorrow morning we'll start off the, off the day in the low 20s and only warm to a high right around freezing. And that will uh, be a quite cold for us compared to what we've been dealing with 50s yesterday and 40s today. The 40s return though by Thursday. Strong gusty winds both Thursday and Friday. Friday, also a cold day, starting off in the teens and only a high of 28, but then we're back to the 40s for your highs on both Saturday and Sunday. Looks like a little bit of up and down this week. Yes, yes. definitely a good way to put it. But, you know, anything is better than last week, I will say. At least <laughs> yes. last Monday in the negative temperatures. Yes, much better for sure. All right. Thanks, Ashley. Up next, most kids in this country are getting too much salt in their diet. We'll take a closer look. But first, Snapchat, Snapchat hard for me to say or easy for me to say, uh, issues another message to its users about the popular service. ABC's John Muller has this morning's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, wildly popular Snapchat issues an apology after users complain about receiving unwanted photo and video messages. The company says the spam is unrelated to a recent security breach. Snapchat allows people to send photos and videos that disappear after viewing. Google wants to have more of an impact in your home. It just bought Nest, maker of stylish digital smoke alarms and thermostats. Those both communicate with your smartphone. Google paid $3.2 billion. Word is Microsoft has begun work on a brand new operating system. Windows 9 will be the company's attempt to move itself past the problems of Windows 8. 9 is expected in April 2015. And a new app for Google Glass hopes to keep drivers from falling asleep at the wheel. Drive Safe issues an audio alert if users start to doze off and then provides directions to the nearest rest stop. Those are your Tech Bytes. Make it a great day. I'm John Muller. To your health this morning, the FDA has a message for anyone who suffers from uh, a concussion. There are no dietary supplements that will cure or prevent them. Researchers say companies that market dietary supplements for concussions are just exploiting the rising concern about traumatic brain injuries. The FDA also says to watch for claims that these products can prevent or lessen the severity of concussions or traumatic brain injuries. There is no science to support that idea. New findings show that many Americans are at risk for high blood pressure because of too much sodium. The risk is especially high for children. The study was conducted by the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. The findings show about 8 out of every 10 children ages 1 to 3 are at risk for high blood pressure. The risk goes up with age. 9 out of every 10 Americans ages 4 and older are at risk. Soups, chips, and other processed foods are high in salt content, so be sure to read those labels. 616 and other news this morning. You can now legally drive 70 on most interstates throughout southern Illinois. The state raised the speed limit from 65 to 70 on those highways starting January 1st, but the rule doesn't take effect until the signs are actually changed. As we reported yesterday, winter weather delayed work by IDOT crews to put up those new 70 mile an hour signs. But operations engineer Keith Miley says four crews are now hard at work finishing the job. We started as soon as we could, but that work was interrupted because, you know, our highest priority is snow and ice removal this time of year. Miley says all of the signs on Interstate 64 are finished and just a few on 57 and 24 are still waiting to go up. All the new speed limit signs should be installed by Friday. The rush by Illinois gun owners to get concealed carry permits is keeping police busy. State police say they're getting about a thousand applications per day right now. So many that local police are worried they don't have the resources to comb through every every uh, application and reject people with a history of violence. Now, state officials say despite the heavy workload, concealed carry permits will not fall into the wrong hands. 
Up next, a Williamson County School District is teaming up with a local business all in the name of safety. We'll have the details in two minutes. You're watching News 3 this morning. We are seeing mostly clear skies early this morning, and that means the sunrise should be quite picturesque. But as we head into the afternoon hours, those clouds will start to build in. Kind of the reverse of what we had yesterday where we started off with the clouds and then we saw the sun. We'll start off with the sun today and then see the clouds. This morning, though, uh, you have no worries as you head out the door on your way to work or school. Just be aware that it is colder this morning than it was yesterday. 30 in Carterville, 28 in Mount Vernon and Pittsburgh, 27 in Marion with calm winds. Those winds will also be picking up later today along with the increasing clouds and a small chance for an isolated shower, especially later on in the afternoon. We are not expecting that rain to really accumulate or amount to much of anything at all, but just be aware that uh, we could see a passing shower later in the day. 45 degrees at noon with mostly cloudy skies, 48 for your high temperature. We would expect any of that rain afternoon and ending by about 3 or 4 o'clock. It's cold tomorrow. Temperatures starting off in the 20s and only high of 32. As we head into Thursday, temperatures in the mid to upper 40s. Cold on Friday. And then by Saturday and Sunday, we're back to the 40s. Mostly sunny skies on Sunday. Jayla, back to you. Thank you, Ashley. 621. A local company wants to make sure all schools are prepared to spring into action in an emergency situation. Crisis Go is holding a one-day one training sessions. It's called It's Time to Make Your Emergency Plan Actionable. It's uh, today in Marion at the Community Unit School District 2 office. It's free and there is still time to register. President and CEO of Crisis Go, Jim Spacuza, is here this morning with the details. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Jayla. Thanks for joining us here. Well, thank you. So tell me a little bit about um, Crisis Go. I know a lot of schools have plans in place already. Why, why should they come to this uh, uh, session and learn from you? Well, Crisis Go has a mobile emergency response app, and we uh, take this all over the country and show people how to make their plans uh, not only actionable, but also be able to have them be more accurate and have them be accessible. So you think about a crisis, it happens in a very, very short period of time. People need access to their resources, access to the information that they need and be able to communicate effectively. Today we're gonna to help them learn how to take apart their plan and make it a AAA, accessible, actionable, and also accurate. Now you had mentioned uh, that in the event of, a, of, of an emergency, you don't have time to comb through a book. So this is about making this uh, an easier, faster reaction. Right? Exactly, exactly what you said. Typically their plans look like a paragraph type of uh, reading, so I'd have to read through a bunch of information to find out my steps. We're going to help them take that and, and tear it apart, build it into action steps, uh, organize their content so when they need to get to it, it's very easy to get to. I know exactly what to do as a teacher, as an administrator, as a principal, and when that time comes that I need to be ready to go, I know exactly where it is, I know what to do, and I can execute it as fast as possible. Do you think that the things that, um, that uh, administrators and, and, and teachers can learn are, at this Crisis Go session, is um, can it be life-saving? You know, we've learned as we've seen uh, many of these shooters enter buildings that it's, it's critical the first few minutes. So if we can help them speed up 10, 15 seconds and how they respond to somebody coming into their building, we think that we can save lives, lots of lives. Reaction time is everything. And everything. you do have local ties here. Um, quickly, what made you want to start Crisis Go? Well, we actually had a school district up in Barrington say, please help us take our emergency plan out of the dusty binder that sits on the desk that we never use mm -hmm. and put it on our phones and pads. So, and it so is we a, did that. We mobilized that. There's definitely a need for it. It is a sign of the times for sure. Yes. Uh, again, you can still register. Um, just call Rebecca Renshaw at the number on your screen. That is 618-997-2114. Thank you so much for being Thanks, here this Jayla. morning. Thanks, Jayla. Appreciate it. Up next, in the wake of the security breach at Target that compromised millions of people's information, experts say there's more hacks to come. We'll tell you how to protect yourself when News 3 This Morning returns. 
Welcome back. Last week we found the data of 70 million customers was compromised when thieves hacked a database at Target. Then Neiman Marcus announced it also had a breach. So what can you do to protect yourself from future hacks like those? The most basic lesson you can learn from the Target breach is this. When you're in the checkout lane, do not share any of your personal information. When a store clerk asks for your phone number, email address, or zip code, simply say no. When you hand over your information, they're putting it into a consumer database collection, which is then used by stores for marketing. But if the retailer is compromised, it puts you at risk. And here's why. If a criminal gets a hold of your credit card numbers, they can do more damage if they also have your personal information. Think of it this way. When you hand over your information to the stores, you're trusting them to keep it safe. Security experts say some retailers are too lax with your personal information, and the regulations are just too outdated at this point. And you know, the other thing that you factor in there, you don't know who's listening behind you in line. Mm -hmm. You know, people, you'd like to think that there's a lot of good in the world, but there are people out there who are just looking to steal your identity, and that's one way that they could actually go about doing it. It's that. a really good point to, to be to be diligent about not giving out those your email and your phone number. I, I was telling you earlier that I don't do it yeah. just because I don't want the junk mail and stuff, but it's all these retailers now ask for it. It's kind of become it's uh, routine. It's become a norm, yeah. And, and I hear people give the information out, so it's interesting to know that that uh, can definitely factor in when people get a hold of your information. Keep that in mind and share it with your friends and neighbors. Well, there's more news and weather straight ahead this morning. Be sure to stay connected with us via social media. or on Facebook, Twitter, and WSILTV.com, where you can go and download our mobile apps for the iPhone and Android. News 3 this morning at 6.30 starts right now.